Hello folks, I wanted to do a little bit of experimenting with Pediococcus. I've never really worked directly with just Pediococcus. Um, I think there is Pediococcus in my house culture. Uh, my beer never gets ropey, I never see any diacetyl. Uh, so I wanted to play around with the different cultures that are available commercially of Pediococcus. So uh, let me go through uh, what exactly I did and uh, I'll show you guys um, what I came up with. So for this I'll be using the White Labs WP661, the Y Yeast 57 Three, three, and the Inland Island Brewing 998 in Inland Island is a new smaller yeast company and they sent me this vial. I just made uh, three gallons of wort, split them up evenly, just the DME wort, 100% wheat, no hops, uh, pretty low gravity, I think the gravity, the starting gravity was around 16 and a half. I measured out uh, the White Labs vials, 35 milliliters, which is the volume that White Labs vials come with and pitched the uh, entire 35 milliliters into the first jug. Uh, this would be the White Labs sample. And I went ahead and measured out 35 milliliters of the Y yeast. Uh, y yeast comes with, I think it's 100 or 125 milliliters of volume of bacteria. Um, now not accounting for cell differences. Hopefully this will be similar in uh, in, in the cell count. Uh, all of the uh, samples, all of the bacteria that I'm using is, is within expiration. And I uh, did the same thing with the Inland Island uh, 998 Pediococcus. Just measured out uh, 35 milliliters of slurry and poured that directly into the third one gallon batch of wort. You can see I've got my three one gallon batches all labeled up, ready to go, put an airlock on each. After about 12 hours you can see that uh, the Y yeast and the Inland Island don't have any activity while the White Labs does have a Krausen on it. This is signs of a yeast infection or yeast contamination. Uh, White Labs is known to have some some yeast contamination contamination issues in their bacteria uh, products. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that later. But as you can see, no activity on the Inland Island or the Y yeast after about 12 hours of sitting in the wort, incubating incubating at about 70 degrees. After 48 hours, there was a small little bit of bubbles on the top of the Y yeast and the Inland Island. They looked the same. Uh, more crowds and build up on the White Labs though. I took samples of all three. This is the Inland Island. You can see it's a little bit ropier than the others, which I also observed out of the vials directly. Uh, the sample was, the culture was a little bit ropier. And ropiness and diacetyl were two of the things that I wanted to kind of get an experience for between these different strains. So after I took my samples, I pitched two grams of Safael 05, uh, measured that out with my gram scale and uh, pitched directly on top of the wort without rehydrating. I took pH readings and uh, gravity readings. Um, the Y yeast measured out at 5.34 pH at this 48 hour mark and it measured at 16 bricks. The Inland Island measured at 5.37 pH and also 16 bricks. The White Labs measured at 5.02 uh, pH and 15.8 bricks, which is to be expected. If it's going to ferment, then uh, the pH is going to go down. It's a little bit um, uh, interesting that I didn't get a lot of lactic acid uh, production. I couldn't taste any acidity. I couldn't taste any diacetyl in the uh, three different batches at this point. Uh, the white yeast one tasted uh, sweet, no diacetyl, light smell of of cereal, uh, wort was lightly viscous, um, and pediococcus uh, can make a beer ropey is what they call it, it's kind of a viscosity, a little bit lighter than the consistency of maple syrup, and that's kind of what I was looking for, diacetyl and, and ropiness, to compare these three different strains on those uh, different characteristics. Uh, the White Labs uh, smelled like apple, uh, possibly acetaldehyde, uh, it also tasted uh, and smelled that way. Uh, there was no diacetyl, no viscosity at all. The Inland Island smelled like 
uh, Fruit Loops, which was kind of interesting. Um, you could also get that in the taste. Uh, also a light viscosity and no diacetyl. Um, now on the yeast contamination issue, um, when White Labs goes to the pure pitch technology, that issue should be resolved. In the meantime, I can't recommend buying any of their bacteria products at this time. Um, now with the Pediococcus, it might not be a big deal. If you have yeast contamination and you're pitching the Pediococcus in secondary, uh, that yeast isn't going to have a huge effect. Um, now, when it comes to like the Delbrookii that they sell, and you're doing a kettle sour, uh, you'll get a big krausen on it, and uh, that's signs of yeast contamination. Keep in mind, Pediococcus is homofermentative, which means that it doesn't create any carbon dioxide. We'll come back in, uh, in a few more weeks and give it another sample, each of these, and uh, see if we get any diacetyl, ropiness, or, or anything else. Three months later, I took another sample from each of the jugs. The White Labs read 3.52 pH. The Inland Island also read 3.52 pH. And the Y use was a touch lower at 3.48. Alright, so as far as sensory goes, here we go. Can you give them a little sniff and a little taste? Uh, first one is the Inland Island. And uh, it's got kind of a, a cidery uh, smell to it, along with like a uh, cereal, like a Fruit Loops kind of a cereal thing going on. The grainy, real tannic grainy. But otherwise, uh, it smells kind of like a mead, actually, like an old mead, an alcoholic mead. Um, so very, very honey-like. But it smells oxidized, like an oxidized mead. Uh, there might have been some oxygen get through on the silicone bungs that I used. <coughs> so that's the aroma on the inland one there. Uh, the White Labs is next here. This one, uh, it doesn't taste quite as honey-like, but it has an aspect of that to it. Just kind of a real light cider uh, aroma coming off of this one. And maybe just a hint of like a plastic. But, you know, really, really light. Um, just kind of a light cider aroma coming off of the White Labs. <clears throat> now the White Yeast. And the white yeast is kind of a cross between the two. It has that Fruit Loop kind of grainy tannic quality to it with a light honey and a light cider. Let's taste them. First up is the Inland Island. Uh, the taste falls the nose is a little bit cidery, a little bit apple -y, but um, uh, definitely a lot lighter in flavor than like a lactobacillus. Uh, uh, fermentation. Um, it is kind of uh, like a soft acidity to it. Which is kind of like what I've heard uh, Vinny Chalurzo describe it as. It's kind of wine-like, like a Chardonnay. Um, it's quite nice. I like it a lot. There's no Britannomyces in this yet. Um, I'm probably going to dose all three of them with amalgamation from the Geese Bay. Uh, just because I have that right now, <clears throat> and um, uh, giving them all the same bread can maybe help with the comparison as well. Next up, we're going to taste the White Labs. And uh, just like the Inland, it's, it's less intense, just a little bit cidery, but a soft acidity to it. Um, a little less characterful, not quite as grapey, or wine-like grapey isn't quite the, the word, but Chardonnay. Uh, the, the Inland tasted like, like, uh, like Chardonnay. This one is a lot lighter on the palate in, in all regards there. But still fairly nice. <clears throat> uh, let's try the white yeast last year. Now, uh, the white yeast does have a little bit of a weird, uh, kind of an off flavor to it. It might be a might be a diacetyl in the white yeast. Not really getting diacetyl in the other two. 
and it seems like it does have a thicker mouthfeel than, than the other two. None of them are really ropey in any kind of way though. Uh, just uh, might have a slightly more viscous mouthfeel than a normal beer would, especially this one. Uh, the uh, tartness on this is a little bit sharper though, noticeably sharper than the other two. It's definitely more intense tasting than the White Labs one, uh, a little more cider character to it. Um, but it's not as smooth as the Inland Island PDO. The Inland Island PDO is actually really nice. I'm uh, really happy that I, I have a culture of that. I think I'm going to work with that a lot more. Uh, the White Labs one is definitely less aggressive. The White Yeast one is a little more aggressive in, in tartness and flavor. Um, you get more of the um, kind of that grainy uh, apple jacks kind of or fruit loops maybe um, kind of grain aspect to it maybe a, maybe a hint of diacetyl there can't really pick out any any diacetyl except for maybe a little bit in the white yeast one so uh, that inland island uh, culture is, is very nice for that that pediococca is very very good um, I don't want to thank them for, for sending that to me uh, that was just a, a test run for me and, and I really appreciate them sending that to me uh, so I'm going to dose each of them with amalgamation and give them a couple more months and we'll see how they go. Thanks for watching.